Okay, today I'm going to be showing you my DIY step sequencer. Now this is an 8 step sequencer and it's very simple. It's based on the Baby 10 sequencer. Now if you do a Google search, you'll find there's an article that's been flowing around for a while. I recently came across it and I thought it would be kind of fun to build. Um, but it's very cheap I and mean, it doesn't take many parts. It's just one IC, um, some potentiometers, diodes, LEDs, you know, that sort of thing. Some and that's about it. I mean, there's really not much to this at all. Now, this is the second prototype that I made. The first one was made in this box here, as you can see. It's uh, it's crude, but it works. It was enough to test out the circuit, see if it's working. Now, the original uh, Baby 10 is obviously a 10-step sequencer, but it's very simple to make it an 8-step. Um, I'm going to put up a link to the article on my blog and then some other links Um so you can, you know, if you're interested in this, you can get started. And you don't have to have a modular to build it. You just have to have uh, some sort of clock pulse and obviously something that you can drive with a CV. Now on this one, um, I added a reset button. This basically resets to the first step. However, if it's not running, the first step was here. So as soon as you started a sequence again, the first step you would heard would be number two. So what I did was I've actually made put part number one here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that works well. So when I press the reset button, it stops here. So it will actually start here at the start of the sequence. Um, I've also added a switch here to run four steps. However, because I've put step number one here, the loop starts here. One, two, three, four. I, you know, it's a bit of a shame. I could probably fix that if I spend a bit more time, which I might do. But for the time being, it's quite fine as it is. Um, I've got a CV output. Um, I had to put some attenuation on this because the output was around up to 12 volts. So I used a couple of resistors, tied one to ground and one on the tip. And, uh, you know, you, if you want to do that, you're going to have to experiment. But I got it down to about from zero to 5.5 volts, which is fine for, you know, for the roll on gear. Um, I've got two clock inputs. These, um, at the moment, I'm running these off the gate on the 202. Uh, the downside of these, using these clocks straight in, there's the clock pulse needs to be half the voltage of the supply voltage. Now I'm running this on 12 volts, so in order to get a clock in, the threshold is six volts. So that rules out the uh, clock output on the modular, unfortunately, but uh, I'm gonna have to build a trigger circuit. I'll add that later. But for now, I can drive this from the 202 gate, or I can drive it from a 303 gate, or a 606 triggers. Those are all strong enough to, to go over the threshold. And uh, yeah, and the second jack here is just a multiple. So if I want to run, for some reason, I want to take the clock out of the gate out to something else, I can do that as well. So anyway, I'll start it off again. And I'll play around with it a bit. Now this, um, the CV out on this is going to a multiple, and one of those is going to the CV in modification I showed you before on the 202. Now the second one's not connected, so I can actually use this and connect it to the filter modification, turn the filter down, and the higher the step, the more open the filter will be. Also, instead of using the gate from the 202, I can actually take the gate from a 606 and then I can use the multiple to add, I need another cable, let's see. 
If I take uh, this multiple out and then run this to the gate in on the 202, that just about fits. That's a short cable, that one. Then um, I've got the 606 here. When I run the 606, I've got the low toms. At the moment, there's a step on every pattern. But if I start off, I'll show you what I can do with that. So you can actually run the trigger outs and you don't have to have, you know, you can put odd numbers in and get some crazy patterns. I'll just pre reset and then I'm going to uh, put some bass drums in. Just a bit of fun, really. As you can see, it's endless fun, but uh, time's running out. So yeah, I'll put some information up on the blog post and that's uh, dinsync.info if you haven't been there before. Um, I'll just put up, you know, this basically this panel is made out of a CD cover, but uh, I'm gonna probably make a, a new version of this with a proper panel and I'm gonna add some switches to disable the CV outs so you can actually turn off the steps. I mean, that's very simple. Uh, you know, if you look at the schematic, you'll see how simple it is and you can do your own modifications and make something that suits you. Right, anyway, that's it. I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time.